I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. I know everybody is getting busy, but there's nothing like coming together early morning. We've been doing this for almost two years already. But once again, we want to call each one and worship the Lord together this morning. Let's spend time together as we study the scriptures, looking forward to an amazing year for all of us, starting tomorrow. But I'd like to read this passage of the scripture in Ephesians. We're going to go through uh, some of the verses in 2 Corinthians, but I'd like to set it up as we, before we worship the Lord today. The scripture here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works for good works, which God prepared beforehand. Beforehand. He prepared something for us that we should walk in them. Let that be our sense of direction starting tomorrow for a brand new day, for a brand new week, a brand new month. Actually, it's going to be a brand new year for all of us. And there's something to look forward to as the Lord had already prepared it beforehand. Let's come and worship God together this morning. And let's sing this song and, and magnify His name as we continue to look forward for what God has prepared for all of us. He deserves our worship this morning.
What an amazing song uh, we just sang today. Uh, I'd like to go through some of the lyrics, even just some of the parts of this song that we just sang today. No longer ashamed, no longer afraid. That's our attitude, that's our heart. He washed me white as snow. Yun lang, hindi tayo makarelate doon, wala tayong snow. No longer bound, but I am crowned. Once in darkness, now I know. You save, you save. As you give me beauty for ashes, and you pull me close to your heart, you have turned my mourning to dancing, and that's what you do. That's what you are. I want you to notice this next uh, stanza. Brand new eyes, brand new hands. You have wiped away my past. Brand new day, brand new life. You pulled me from the lies. I like that idea of having brand new eyes. Some of us, we've lost our sight sometime the last two years. But the Lord is giving us new eyes. And He mentioned brand new hands. And that speaks of service. That speaks of ministry. That speaks of God's mission. And the Lord, just as He has given us new life, God is giving us new vision and new hands, new service new ministry that the Lord had prepared for us, even as we have quoted from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. There will be much more amazing reason why we're going to be waking up uh, excited tomorrow morning. I know tonight, as soon as we uh, see that time passing 12 to midnight tonight, there will be celebration from all over the world. But let that be a sign, not because there's a new year, because there's going to be a new opportunity that God has prepared in advance for us. I'm not saying we celebrate every day like, like New Year's Eve, but hey, every day is a new day, and the Lord has something prepared for all of us. It's just amazing that today is more, the, the level of expectation is higher. And we're going to look at this passage of the scripture um, uh, that would show us uh, how to have this uh, new, new, with this new life God has given us. With it is a new ministry, with our new eyes and new hands. And when we do that work that God wants us to do, God prepared beforehand in advance good works. And that, the sustenance of that would require an amazing motivation. What would motivate us? What is our aim for the year? Let me propose, according to Apostle Paul in Ephesians, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, let's look at verse 9. And it says, So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. May that be our aim for 2022, to please God. To please God. Let that be our motivating fact, the motivate, motivation. 
in serving Him and advancing His kingdom this year and beyond. And as we look at that, I look at this passage from below uh, verse 10 up to the last verse in verse 21. I would like, I'd like us to uh, see uh, different reasons why or reasons how we can continue to serve God in this new ministry. With the new life, God is giving us something to do for His service. And this is a new ministry for all of us. And what are the, what are the motives? What are the reasons? Number one, fear of the Lord. Looking at verse 10 of 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter, uh, chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. And, and it says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Verse 11, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. The fear of the Lord. Let that be our motivating um, uh, uh, desire to do ministry, to persuade others. The fear of the Lord, knowing that there is such a thing as that we will one day show up in the judgment seat of God. Healthy fear of the Lord. Let that be one of our motives in pleasing the Lord next year. As we move on, um, we will see. In verse 14, jumping to verse 14, it, it says here, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, and therefore all have died. The second, besides the fear of the Lord, that second reason why we do what we should be doing, that the Lord had prepared for us for next year, is the love of Christ. Let the love of Christ compel us compels us to do ministry. God has prepared something amazing for all of us and let the love of Christ motivate us to do that ministry. And that's, that's, uh, that's just amazing. And you read through that up to verse 16 and you will see amazing opportunity why we want to have this motive of the love of Christ. The third reason why we do service for the Lord and in this new ministry for the year up ahead is that the power of the gospel, the power of the, it's not just the fear of the Lord, the love of Christ, but the power of the gospel. Look at verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Could you imagine the transforming power of that gospel? From the old to the new. It's almost like our experience tonight. From the old 2021 to 2022, as soon as that uh, uh, hand would strike the 12 and it go beyond that and go to the first, uh, a second, could you imagine? It's not just the change of time. But it's the transforming power of Christ because of the gospel in a person's life. From darkness to light. From the past failures to the future amazing mission God has for us. And that only because of the love of Christ and the power of the gospel in a person's life. And, and so the last one that we can see in that passage, verse 15 is the reconciliation of the world. Let that be the reason for us to do what the Lord has called us to do. You may be a pastor, a missionary, or you may be a businessman. You may be a banker. You may be an employee, a frontliner. What I want us to do, I want us to realize is that God has prepared something in advance for us. And let that mo overarching motivation to please the Lord and in so doing, there is that fear of the Lord. There is that love of Christ. There is that amazing power of the gospel. And not only that, but the knowledge that people can be reconciled back to God is just amazing. And we look at that in verse 18 and it says, And all this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And it is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not 
con- not counting the, their trespass against them, not imputing their sins against them. That's a banking term, impu- imputation. Not counting their trespass against them and entrusting to us instead the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making His appeal through us. And the message would be, we implore you in behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, is describing the Lord Jesus, so that in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. What an amazing concept to know that the reconciliation of the world is being made possible because of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. That's why we have the good news. That's why it's not just that we're having a new year and experiencing and celebrating that tonight, but because we have a new mission God has prepared for us. Fruitful, amazing mission. Whether you're working in in business, in the bank, in a company, in a corporate world, maybe you're working or in the ministry, what is important is God is asking us to join Him in His ministry designed for 2022. Are you up for it? I like how, I like how John Wesley put it. Let this be our prayer. This is how John Wesley put it. Give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin, desire nothing but God, and I care not whether they be clergymen or laymen. They alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of of heaven upon earth. Give me 100 men. Amazing. Men and women who would do that. So, As I end today, as we celebrate the year 2022, I'd like to say, with our new life in Christ, in the Spirit-led gospel ministry, let us make it our ultimate aim to please God. Let that be our desire for the year 2022. Let's just worship Him once again. Father God, thank you for giving us this amazing year. Amazing year had gone by. We had experienced so much tears and pain and loss. And, but yet, you have shown your mercy in the middle of all these. This time, Lord, as we are looking forward, starting tonight, looking forward to a new day, a new week, a new month, a new year. We're hopeful, for you have prepared beforehand something amazing for your people. We worship you, Lord God. You are a reversal expert, a turnaround specialist that can turn our morning to dancing. Let's just worship him today. Oh, you make all things new, Lord. You make all things new, Lord. We're no longer the same.
when you pull me close to your heart and you have turned my morning to dancing cause that's what you do Amazing, amazing reminders today. Looking forward to an amazing uh, day tomorrow. Once again, that verse in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We were not just saved for the sake of being saved. We were saved, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. To do good works. And He has already prepared that for you and I. I want to pray for each family today. I want to pray for each one as we end this year of 2022 and as we end this message. Father God, thank you for an amazing plan and purpose you have for us. You have designed us, Lord God, uh, to overcome. And by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have accompanied us and you've seen us through the year. Looking forward that you will see us through as well for the year 2022. For those who are, uh, Lord, confined in the privacy of their rooms and, and probably still in the hospital, some of them are in quarantine. We just pray for more grace upon each and every person, each and every uh, family, even the frontliners who are still out there up to tonight. May your grace be upon them. Looking forward, Lord, that you, you be with us in this endeavor of fulfilling your purpose for us for the next year. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the hope. Thank you that Jesus is our hope and is coming back again for his people. In Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.